Hey, what's up everyone? It's time for Gospel Grit and today I want to pick up um, on the video I, that I did last week for Gospel Grit that was called Be The One. Basically, it's be the one in your family. Be the one to go all in. Be the one to go hard for Christ. Be the one. And in the same, um, I guess you could say, uh, culture in the same reality in the same circumstances uh, this is be the one wherever you are and wherever you are be all in wherever you are go uh, as as hard as you can for Christ there uh, lately you know even in my own uh, struggles and my own battles against the flesh and my own um, you know dealings with my own heart and talking to uh, one brother specifically who's uh, in a situation that you know uh, he's uh, battling similar things but the Lord has been really gracious to him and you know his sharing with me has really been uh, just very beneficial for my own heart and it's and it's just uh, you know being challenged with this with this reality that so many times I think that uh, we fail to really take into into consideration that uh, you know that place that God has us in is uh, it's literally by His design, right? When you take into account His sovereignty, when you take into account His providence, when you take into account His decree, when you take into account that you know Romans eight twenty eight that all things work together for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purposes. When, when you really bring in uh, this this view of God that is biblical and it's comforting uh you th th then then you really must look at the fact that you are in a position you are in a situation you are literally in a state where the lord has you specifically uh, by design intentionally um if you're not doing anything sinful if you're not um you know, if, if your current state is not living in sin, if your current state is not, you know, uh, clouded with sin in, in every direction, you can confidently say that you are doing the will of the Lord and that you are walking in the will of God because what he's revealed, you're seeking to be faithful to that. So uh, where God has you right now, be all in. Where you are, be all all there um even in first corinthians 7 uh, paul is addressing this very thing and he's talking about things like marriage and and, and singleness and, and you know those who are widowed and, um, and all that and that's the context but even more specifically he begins to go even into things like circumcision uncircumcision bond servants and and basically it's this, it's this in first corinthians 7 verse 17 he says this only let each person lead the life that the lord has assigned to him did you catch that the lord has assigned to him that individual something specific to him and that person must lead the life that the lord has assigned to him and to which god has called him this is my rule in all the churches was anyone at this at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him seek to not remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. Basically, he's saying for neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. There goes that will of God. If you're keeping the commandments, then those elements where you find yourself don't matter as much. What matter what matters more is keeping the commandments, walking in the revealed will of God. And he goes even further. He says, um, each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. Were you a bond servant when you when called? Do not be concerned about it. But again, if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself of the opportunity. For he who has who was called in the Lord as a bond servant is a freed man of the Lord. Likewise, he who was free when when is called, when called, is a bond servant of Christ. You were bought with the price. Do not become bond servants of men. Listen to this. So, brothers, in whatever condition each was called, let him remain with God. There, let him remain with God. There, let him be with God. And I, I love the caveat that Paul says, if you were a bondservant, then be content in that. But if you can avail yourself of the freedom, do so. So, what I'm trying to get at here is stop wishing things were different. Stop... Um, uh, you know, saying, I I'm not going to do anything until da 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 da. I I'm just going to live my life on cruise control until I have a different job, until I have um, a different, um, you know, environment, until I'm in a new house, until I'm in a new um, setting, until I'm in a new city, until I'm in a new whatever. Uh, wherever you find yourself today, uh, and again, if there's if there's no uh, harboring or, or living in sin, and that, that, that you cause or that you're doing that you're willfully walking in darkness wherever you, you find yourself today stop wishing things were different and make the most of where you are today uh, make the most of the state you find yourself today make the most of where literally locationally um, 
uh, work wise, house wise, uh, family wise, one kid, two kid, three kids, no kid, whatever it is, stop saying, oh, when this happens or when that happens or when, you know, this changes over here, that no, go hard wherever you are today. The grass is always greener on the other side. No, no, no. The grass is greener where you water it. The grass is greener where you're investing. The grass is greenest where you are going the hardest for Christ. So analyze your situation. Be wise. Look at the scripture. Look at where you find yourself and ask yourself, considering all, all that I see in my life, how can I make the most of the glory of Christ where he has me? In the circumstances that he has me today, can I go hard for Christ there? Can I excel there? Can I live and glory in Christ in whatever I find myself today? Can I take dominion there? Can I apply the lordship of Christ there? Can I extol and magnify the Lord there? Can I savor his gospel there? Can I really say I'm bringing the glory of Christ to bear where he has me today? So wherever you find yourself, Remember, you were bought with the with, with the price, and that price, right? That redemption, that 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 true eternal salvation of your soul. Uh, it's not just, uh, you know, in two and sorry, like in you know, 200 years from now that, that that's when God's really concerned for your soul or, you know, in 50 years when you're finally in glory. No, no. Salvation is is total, right? He saves your soul today and he cares for you today and he brings you in today. So you can confidently say you were bought with the price and it's not just something in the future that is real today. So by design, you are where you are right now. It's, again, the only caveat is obviously if you're living in sin, that's not where the Lord wants you. That's not what the Lord has designed for you. And we're not making justifications for that. But where you are honoring Christ and where you are seeking to to truly live under his will, if there's no sin in your life that is going unrepentant of, you can look at your circumstances. You can like look at your day to day. You, you can look at your setting, whatever your setting is, and you can say, Christ has me here by design. So let me go hard from him. Don't wait for something to change tomorrow. Take the banner of Christ to every sphere of life today. Preach the gospel of Christ to yourself today and say, okay, here it is. Here's my, here's the week that I find myself in. Here's the month. Here's the year that I find myself in. I'm living here. I got this family situation. I'm at you know, this church. I'm in this setting. I've had these ministry opportunities. Uh, I'm serving my family in these ways. Let me go hard for Christ there. And what you'll begin to see is the more that you truly glory and find joy and the very day to day stuff and the normal stuff, there's a real sense where you'll begin to just say, oh, for the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, I consider all things as rubbish. Why? Because you're doing the thing that has the greatest glory and the things that are grabbing for your attention, the, the, the things you thought you needed begin to truly uh, go by the wayside. And then many times, actually, it's not a guarantee, obviously, but many times the Lord ends up re rewarding such faithfulness, such obedience. And, and th th there's a tendency where, you know, when you're faithful in the small, the Lord's going to entrust uh, bigger things to you. But don't worry about that. Don't look forward to that. Don't say, I'll do it when that happens. No, be all in where you are today. Be the one where you are today to truly take the glory of Christ and, and, and bring that to bear on the way you do anything and everything where you are go hard for christ church go hard for christ wherever you find yourself go all in and be all in and truly live to the glory of christ there wherever you find yourself this very second wherever you are wherever you're listening to this look around you and say can i am i going hard for christ here am i bringing his glory to bear am, am i showing the goodness of christ wherever look around and, and ask yourself am i doing that and if you do that you'll begin to see there's such joy that follows this obedience